So thanks for having me. I think I have 15 minutes and I have 44 slides, so uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not going to go very well. Um, so uh, I'm going to spend 10 seconds on blatant self-promotion, and then we will get into talk about bubbles and unicorns and all that good stuff. So uh, about us, we are a data company. We are a Bloomberg for private companies, if we need a tagline. If you are in venture, corporate strategy, corporate innovation, corporate M&A, and are not a customer, we've got problems, so you should, we should talk. A lot of press uses us. If you don't have money but like data, subscribe to our newsletter. All right, that's all the self-promotion. So lots of bubble chatter. So there's a lot of talk about bubbles right now, and a lot of smart people are saying there is a bubble, there's not a bubble. You have hedge fund guys, you have VCs, you have the press, you know, all sorts of folks are coming out on different sides of, of, this, of this topic. Uh, so, you know, lots of intensity around this conversation. Um, there's also other signs that there might be a bubble. Uh, revenue is now a feature. Uh, burn rate doesn't matter. This one I like. Uh, you now can get stock options as part of your house purchase. This one's my favorite, as we're based in New York City, so when investment bankers start taking less money to go to startups, like you know like the end could be near, because <laughs> these guys like money, uh, and so that's uh, it's a problem. Uh, so our thesis on all this stuff is we are a data company, so there's a lot of anecdote and kind of very smart narrative, but we are sort of live by this motto, so in God we trust, all others must bring data. So I'm going to go through the why it's a bubble part, uh, and then we'll go through a little bit of why it is not. So, oops, um, everybody here should know this, but what's a unicorn? Private companies valued at over a billion dollars. Uh, unicorn exits, those that have exited for over a billion dollars via M&A or IPO, just a level set. So, you know, these are a lot of the factors that folks say are the reasons for a bubble, right? Lots of new fund formation, right? And so you see this is kind of a breakdown of all the funds that have been created over time by size. Um, so people say, oh, lots of new VCs rushing into the market. It must be a bubble. Lots of new unicorns, right? And so this is, this is where it is just ridiculous. So we, we have a unicorn tracker on CB Insights uh, just because we got questions from the media so much. And we'd give them a data point, And by the end of the day, it was already outdated. Uh, so there's lots of new companies that are sort of getting that billion dollar mark in the private markets. Not The exit picture is not very pretty. Um, so VC deal and funding activity is down. So that you can see that last quarter, 11.3 billion, 805 deals. But when you start pulling in the hedge funds, the mutual funds, the sovereign wealth funds, the corporations, funding's actually up very big. So you know, there's a lot of money rushing in. Again, you know, that we must be in a bubble. Uh, it is much easier to raise money right now than at a billion dollars than it is to exit at one. So if you look here, in Q115, there was one IPO over a billion. There were seven private company financings at a billion dollars. So there's a little bit of a, a problem there. Um, IPO activity has not been very good. Uh, Q1 2015 was pretty grim. I don't know who, I think Fitbit might be the only one right now that's in the, in waiting in the wings. So there's not really a very healthy exit environment, but lots of money and lots of people saying that companies are worth a lot. Uh, Josh Koppelman kind of coined this phrase, I think he coined it, the private IPO. So what you see here is the orange line are all of the hundred million dollar plus rounds. And that's sort of the average of a, that's sort of the median in an IPO raise. So, you know, what we're seeing is sort of the private IPO. It's a bit of an oxymoron, but that's, that's what's kind of taking off. Um, and so, you know, kind of collectively, the black line is sort of private plus public IPO. So a lot going on there. So, you know, the other thing that we see is all this, these new cast of characters, right? So you have the Fidelities, you have the, all the Tiger Cubs, which is all the hedge fund guys coming in. Um, you have a lot of corporations in Asia. So you have, you know, the Alibaba and Tencent and Huawei and all those folks kind of doing a lot of investment as well. Um, and so what we see here, you know, and so this is Tiger Global, all their sort of offspring and all their investments, right? And so, um, you know, a lot of hedge funds. <clears throat> Corporate VC deal activity is way up. Again, you know, oh, the dumb money, right? So this is what everybody calls the dumb money, right? So the number of VCs jumping in kind of keeps, corporate VCs jumping in keeps going up. 
right? And so then the refrain from VCs is that these guys are dumb, right? Um, I think that does two things, right? First, it is, if you look at VC returns, they, it takes a lot of gall to call any other investor dumb, uh, <laughs> right? Uh, I think the other thing is it's just there's competition, right? Like nobody likes competition, and so the easy way to to frame it is well, we add a lot of value, and we do all these like artisanal things that make companies more more uh, successful. But you know the, the numbers don't really prove themselves out. So. You know, this is the other refrain, like, oh, there's so much dumb money rushing into the market, like we must be in a bubble. Um, so, you know, then you have price to revenue multiples of unicorns. So this is a little, when is this from? It's probably a couple months ago, but you know, Uber and Slack, kind of from a multiple perspective, are pretty kind of off the charts, right? So again, eye-popping valuations and, and multiples. Um, you know, you look at Box versus Dropbox, right? When you sort of do the, you know, there's a public-private company dichotomy. Uh, you know, companies are valued a lot higher in the private markets than their, than their public market peers. E-commerce companies are trading at five, six x in the private markets and in public markets, you know, one to two. So again, this disconnect is a problem. Those are all the reasons it is a bubble. So why is it not a bubble? Rainbows shooting out of a unicorn's ass. So this is <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> um, so why is it not a problem? I think you know, this is the old software is eating the world kind of thing, right? So one of the things that we've been seeing is sort of the interest in tech is very, is coming from lots of non-tech places, right? So you look at Honeywell, right? All the companies going after somebody like Honeywell. All the companies going after the car, right? All the, all the you know, so it's not just like tech companies attacking other tech companies anymore. It's a little bit more pervasive. You've got P&G being unbundled. You have FedEx and UPS, right? So I think these are Wells Fargo, Bank of America, City, right? And it's not just US, right? I think, well, I forgot to put it in. We've done similar on HSBC. There's a ton of activity in Europe, you know, in Asia. So there's all these sort of death by a thousand cuts that is happening. I think the other thing that is promising for startups is that, you know, the old guard are waking up, right? So. Um, Goldman has this, what is this, the rise of the new shadow bank. Like anything Goldman does like has to sound like super like crazy espionage, but it was just a fintech report, but they just made it sound very sexy. Um, you know, uh, Jamie Dimon has, you know, kind of talked about the rise and the, the fear of Silicon Valley. So, you know, I think these guys waking up, the big corporates is another sign that there's going to be some legs here for startups, right? The other thing is... Um, this is the chief investment officer of BlackRock put out this really good sort of presentation on, <coughs> excuse me, on share buybacks, right? And so basically his, his view on it was that companies are not investing in what he calls productive capacity. They're basically just doing financial engineering because that's what hedge funds and other folks want to see. And so the, the benefit to startups is they're not investing in innovation, right? And so there's this opportunity. And so there's... Um, you know, there's markets and business models that people want that big companies are not going to invest in because they're too busy trying to goose their EPS with these share buybacks and other things. So, you know, I think this is another reason that innovation is going to be kind of continuing. Um, that earlier chart on VC fundraising being crazy, it's really not that crazy. Like, it's a bunch of small micro VCs, right? Less than $100 million. You add up all of these guys, you probably have an NEA. Right, like they just they're, you know, they're doing great stuff. But in the grand scheme of like, is this an asset class that presents this immense risk to the general economy? They're like a rounding error, right? So it's just not that big of a deal. They get a lot of fanfare because tech gets a lot of fanfare. Um, this has gone up a little bit, but the point being, every unicorn combined is worth less than Facebook. I think the team's working on redoing this. I think they're more than Facebook, less than Microsoft right now. So moved up a little bit. That's partly because it just is like a new unicorn every six minutes. So, um, so that's part of the reason for that. Uh, you know, unicorns as a percent of the NASDAQ 100 total market cap, 3.5%. This is probably about the same because the NASDAQ has also climbed since I pulled this together. Public markets aren't so crazy. So this is where, when people ask us about the bubble, we launched CB Insights five years ago. We've gotten the question every month, now it's daily, about a bubble for all five years, right? So like, eventually you'll be right. Like if you keep predicting there's gonna be a bubble, you will definitely be right. So that's, that's a good strategy if you want to, uh, you know, be Winter bold. Is coming. So, um, 
So, but you know, public markets are one area that haven't been crazy, right? So when you look at the multiples for, I think this is for SaaS companies, you know, they've actually been kind of contracting. This is this crazy chart, but you know, in the public markets, ho-hum kind of mediocre companies that have gone public have been punished, right? I worked at Cosmo.com in the first dot-com boom, and you know, then if you were dot-com, you had a, you got, you know, crazy valuation, right, right from the get-go. Now you look at the ad tech companies have all been smoked on the public markets. Box is kind of doing all right, um, you know, not great. Uh, the lending trees of the world and whatnot are also, or lending club rather, the world are also facing some headwinds. So I think public market rationality is a really good thing for the private markets. Um, so that's, I think, another reason that we think that there's not really a bubble. Um, and then finally, this is, I think, the biggest point in our view is that a bubble is sort of the rapid expansion and the rapid contraction of the values. And what we are seeing is there's a rapid expansion of values. The contraction side is going to be a little bit harder. So public markets kind of expose you very, everybody knows your scorecard at the end of the day. With the private markets, <clears throat> like, have you ever met an angel investor who says they have not made money? Right? Like, there's so much selection bias and survivorship bias in like what people talk about in their returns. And so the private markets let you bury the dead very quietly, right? And so what will happen is some hedge fund that came into the market that didn't make money will exit and everybody will say, well, they didn't make money because they were just dumb, right? It wasn't because everybody's not making money, right? Nobody publicizes this. So I think this <clears throat> so opaqueness of the private markets is one reason that the contraction side is going to be very slow, right? And I think when bubbles pop, and I just I see this as going to be more of a, a slow deflation over time than a pop. Uh, so that was everything I had. I actually made it through 46 slides in like 12 minutes. All right. Um, so if you want the presentation, ping me, email me if you have questions. Um, but yeah, I, don't, I think Dave and I are talking, or folks have questions. But And if you ask a good question, I have t-shirts. So if you ask... A good question that makes me look smart, I will give you a t-shirt. <laughs>